Welcome back everyone for today's video. We are going to be taking a look at round number seven or the semifinals of the FIDE World Cup being held in Baku, Azerbaijan. Now the former world chess champion Magnus Carlsen back in action playing against Nijat Abisov from Azerbaijan, the local hero and the biggest surprise of the tournament, a player who's rated 26 46 and has made it all the way to the semifinals and with Magnus not participating in the candidates tournament next year he will qualify he will be the lowest player in the candidates in quite some time now it's quite surprising also because Azerbaijan is a country that has a very long and rich chess history there have been some great players like the late Vugar Gashimov Timur Rajabov and of course Shakur Mamadyarov all three of those players at various times have been in the top five in the world of chess so let's jump right into the action so as always it's a two-game match of classical chess which Magnus Carlsen finds very boring now game number one Magnus with the white pieces he starts with the move e4 Abisov plays c5 as saying the Sicilian which he has played with great success throughout the tournament we get knight to f3 now we have knight to c6 and Magnus plays the move bishop b5 playing the classic Rosalimo defense so we get bishop to b5 and now we have e6 being played by Abisov Magnus trades this is all standard theory so far we get b3 d6 and now Magnus plays e5 now many many moons ago approximately 20 years to be precise I actually was playing this e6 line in the Ross Limo a lot with the black pieces and I had a very famous game with the move d5 against the current CEO of FIDE Emil Satovsky in Pamplona in 2003. Now Abisov plays move d6, Magnus plays e5, we get pawn takes pawn, and now Magnus plays the first novelty of the game, which is this move d3 on move number seven. Now in the past, knight takes e5 has been played quite a bit, and after this move queen to d4, for example, I believe that here white can play knight c4, queen takes a1, knight to c3, and white is actually much better if not winning here, even though he's down a rook at the present moment, because if black plays a move like knight to f6, you can castle, let's say bishop e7, and after queen f3 castles and bishop to b2 white traps the queen now black can sack the queen for the two rooks but with these weak weakened pawns on c6 and c5 and the idea is to jump with the knight white is actually much better here now Magnus of course has done some deep prep at home and plays this move d3 Abisov plays f6 a very logical move trying to protect his extra pawn in the center Magnus plays knight bd2 Abisov plays knight to h6 and now we get another huge revelation which is this very awkward and unusual move rook to g1 now it's very clear that Magnus had done some very serious preparation on this variation now I have not listened to his post-game interview he probably explained who he prepared for or perhaps he'd even looked at this from the black side during a potential world championship match but at any rate it's a big surprise this does not show up anywhere this is all unknown territory but the computer actually really likes this move in fact says the things that white is already a little bit better so after rook g1 Abisov plays a very natural looking move bishop to a6 and this is already a blunder after which if Stockfish Leela or Alpha Zero were playing this position with white they would win this position a hundred times out of hundred because it is technically lost now you're probably thinking how is that even possible now the reason for that is actually quite simple when you look at this position even though black is an extra pawn this light square bishop is very bad you can't get the bishop into the game this diagonal is closed by the pawn the other diagonal is closed by this pawn so light square bishop is simply dead now it's very very deep and obviously we don't know yet where Magnus came up with this idea but it's really amazing so after bishop a6 Magnus plays the move g4 now the computer actually thinks queen a5 is the only move to keep black in the game and after this very unusual move king to f1 with the idea of g4 it's very very murky I don't know what the objective evaluation is of course all the top grandmasters will be using their supercomputers and evaluating this variation but it's really really unusual and no one knows quite what's going on but queen a5 is not a natural looking move bishop to a6 makes much more sense trying to maybe develop the queen maybe the castle king maybe go c4 e4 down the road so here Magnus plays g4 which makes sense rook guards the pawn and if you're playing rook g1 and you can't castle then the only idea is to try and activate this rook on the g file so we get knight to f7 Magnus plays queen e2 bishop to e7 and here Magnus makes a slight inaccuracy with this move bishop b2 the computer actually thinks that after white tries to sack his second pawn with g5 this is simply horrible if black takes the pawn you do not capture the pawn here because if you capture there's queen d4 hitting both the rook and the knight but instead you play the move bishop b2 and after black plays move like bishop f6 there is now knight to e4 and white is suddenly doing great because black's pawns are horrible you have three sets of double stacked pawns and black's bishops also are not very good here now this is very deep computer chess so it's hard to really explain but the computer thinks it's just gg so 
Magnus, of course, is not a computer. He clearly was not expecting this variation. In fact, it's very hard to even believe you'll get this variation because D3 in and of itself was already a novelty. So Magnus plays bishop b2, a very natural looking move to develop the bishop, wants to keep castles in mind, maybe play g5, but it's a simple developing move, which from a human perspective makes a lot of sense, but it is not the best move. Abyssal plays queen a5 here, and now Magnus makes a big mistake with this move c4. Now when I say big mistake, I have to be very clear. I am talking from a 3,800 level computer performance. I'm not talking about us humans. c4 to a human actually makes a lot of sense because it shuts the bishop out of the game. Bishop no longer creates any threats on diagonal. More importantly, black can no longer play c4. If black could play c4, potentially you open up this diagonal for the dark square bishop. But c4 cuts off the light square bishop. You can't push. Now the dark square bishop doesn't have any access either. So it does make some sense. But the computer actually really doesn't like this move. And I can't even explain why, to be fair. Computer wants white to play a4. And after black plays moves like g5, castles let's just say black castles here the big difference is that white can plop the knight on c4 and if black actually i was going to say knight c4 is best and if black plays a move like queen to c7 for example i think white can now play knight d2 knight e4 and maybe bishop a3 again i don't really understand what the deep nuances of the position are but what i do know is the computer really likes this a4 move now another reason that a4 maybe is better is that down the road maybe you have ideas like c3 and d4 to try and break the center wide open but again this is all very difficult to analyze and without using a supercomputer here the chess.com engines evaluations are going to be very suspect at best so we get the move c4 which computer doesn't like g5 played by abisov trying to stop white from pushing the pawn and activating the rook on the g file magnus plays h4 we get h6 and here Magnus goes rook to h1, trying to open up the h file and potentially use it down the road. Abasov castles as expected. Magnus castles here. And now Abasov uses a long time before playing queen c7. Now it's a very difficult position here. The computer actually likes king b8 a little bit more. But from a human perspective, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And the reason it doesn't make a lot of sense is there's some serious dangers involving this pawn on e5. One sample line, even though it doesn't quite work, is pawn takes pawn. Pawn takes pawn, rook takes rook, let's say black takes with the rook, and white can now sack the knight for the pawn on e5, and after takes, takes, suddenly the king is in check, the rook is hanging on h8, and it just feels very scary. Now, computer actually thinks after king h8 takes, for example, here, queen takes e6, after queen c3, it's simply a draw, but very hard to see this line from 10 moves, uh, 10 moves earlier. So, Abasov goes queen c7 instead. Now, I do like this. Capturing the pawn would be fairly insane, because after king c2, queen a5, rook to a1, queen b6 white has moves like bishop c3 threatening bishop a5 to win the queen and the rook if you move the queen I can now go rook to a2 followed by rook a1 with a double stack and black is in a lot of trouble here so Abyssal plays queen c7 and as I was saying I'm a little bit critical of the time usage I think this movie should have played in five or ten minutes versus using 20 minutes but it is what it is so we get knight to e4 from Magus. Abasov takes the pawn here on h4. And after knight h4, he plays rook g8. Very important to trade the pawns here because now white cannot use the h file. Whereas in other variations, if you play like rook g8 takes takes, white can play rook h7 and do the double stack on the h file. So when he takes on h4 here, it's a good move because after knight h4 and rook g8, the knight on f7 guards the weak pawn on h6. You can pressure the pawn on g4. And ideas with f5 come into play down the road, opening up the scope for the dark square bishop. So we get f4 from Magnus, and here Abasov makes a mistake by taking the pawn. Now, hard to be critical, but king to b8 would have been a better move here. And the reason is that if white takes on e5, you can take with the knight, and suddenly the pawns on d3 and g4 are very weak. And if white plays f5, now after bishop c8, suddenly the light square bishop is coming to life very quickly. After take six, suddenly the pawn on g4 is weak, and your bishop is on the optimal diagonal. Whereas all the way back here, the bishop is simply a bum piece. It's not in the game. It's staring at a dead diagonal, and you can't even bring it back to the other diagonal. So king b8 would have made more sense, but Abasov instead takes. Now the one upside to taking on f4 is now the moves become very concrete, and the next five or six moves are all very forced. So after pawn takes pawn, we get knight takes pawn on f6, bishop takes knight, queen takes pawn, checking the king and capturing the bishop, king f8, queen f6, and now the dust is somewhat settled. White is a little bit better here due to the pawn islands. Black has one, two, three, four pawn islands. At the same time, because Magnus has played c4, this pawn on d3 is always a permanent weakness, and the g4 pawn is also weak, and the bishop comes back into the game very quickly. So there are advantages to playing this. The computer does think white still has a significant significant advantage though so we get bishop c8 
Magnus plays rook to e1, hoping for, say, rook takes g4, because after rook to e7, rook to d7, white can now play, I think, knight f5 or knight g6, not sure which one's best. But after, I guess knight g6 is the only one, because knight f5 loses to f3. But after knight to g6 here, if you play a move like f3, white can take the horse, knight guards the rook. And apparently with the knight on f5, I guess there's probably some check that is losing, but white has great chances. So here, Abyssal plays rook to d6. We get queen takes f4, rook takes g4. And now Magnus plays queen e3, which is sort of starting to lose the thread on the position. Computer thinks that after queen to f1, guarding the pawn on d3 and keeping the queen on this open f file here, the white still has a significant advantage. But it's easy to say that when you're looking at the computer. In human practice, not so obvious. So we get queen e3. Abyssal plays rook e6. Magus plays queen d2, trying to prevent some kind of queen f4 check. We got knight to e5 here. And now Magus makes a big mistake with king c2. In this position, if Magus had played the move rook to e3, he would have had a very, very big advantage because the knight can't go anywhere and you're threatening to double stack on the e file. One sample line would be a move like knight to g6, which actually loses because after takes, 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 white can now just simply play a move like rook to h5 or even rook to h6. And in this position, after the rooks come off the board, say black plays queen d7, there's queen to e3, and you're probably going to lose this pawn on c5 at some point down the road. One sample line is like bishop f5, king c2, king b7, and bishop to a3 going after the pawn on c5. Now, again, this might not be winning, but it's going to be very difficult to defend. Instead, Magnus plays king c2, and now Abyssal plays this move king b7 after a relatively short thing. Now, again, one thing that's very important to note at this point is we're only on move 27. Magnus is 26 minutes. Abyssal is Abyssal has 17, so you don't want to spend too much time, which is why he plays this move. The computer thinks that after rook g3, pressuring the pawn on d3, black is already very close to completely fine. So we get king b7, Magnus plays rook e3 now, but here it's one move later, and with the king on b7, they're no longer there are no longer threats on the diagonal, and black is in time with this move queen to e7, because after knight to f5 and queen g5 here, if white takes knight, the king is no longer in check. So if Magnus had played rook to e3 first, none of this would have been possible because after queen e7, knight f5, queen g5 takes, it's simply check and white wins the game. So Magnus had the right idea but played it one move too late. So we get queen e7, knight f5, queen g5, excellent moves from here from Abyssal. Magnus takes the knight, Abyssal plays rook g2, another extremely good move because now you're threatening to win the queen on the second rank and white has to start trading off the pieces here. So Magnus plays rook e2, we get the swap, queen f5 here, and now Magnus plays rook h5, trying to guard the bishop on e5 from the side. We also, of course, have a classic right triangle. Here, Abyssal plays queen f7, an excellent move, keeping the queen on the open f file, while keeping an eye on the bishop and an eye on the rook. Here, Magnus plays queen h2, which is a huge blunder, and actually loses the game if Abyssal had used some time and found the right continuation. Now, one thing that Magnus somehow gets I don't want to say lucky with but seems to happen every time is when he makes a big blunder his opponents seem to play a move in 30 seconds or less and this is another prime example where after queen h2 Abyssal plays this move rook g6 in 10 seconds he plays this move in 10 seconds actually I think he used 40 seconds because he gains a little bit of time but he plays this move almost instantly now, if we, if we think back to round number four of the World Cup, Magnus was playing against Vincent Keimer from Germany, and in a fateful moment, Vincent did not play his knight takes e4 move. Instead, he traded the queens, I believe, in 30 seconds as well. So somehow, Magnus is able to get these, I, I don't even, I don't want to say luck, because obviously he's very strong, and he wins a lot of games, and you know, you make your own luck and everything, but somehow his opponents seem to play these quick moves right in the moment when they had their chance to seize the opportunity, or as we like to say in Latin, carpe diem, seize the day. So here, if Abyssal had used a little bit of time and played this move queen f1, the computer thinks this is actually winning on the spot. And the reason is, is not actually so obvious. Because here, if white were to trade the pawns on h6, after takes, takes queen e2, black wins this bishop on e5 and long term should be winning. And if white plays a natural looking move like queen to d2, you can now infiltrate with the move rook g6, threatening rook g2 to win the queen. And after white plays rook h2, stopping rook g2, you now have rook g1 threatening to mate on b1 and a1. So a sample line would be, say, rook f2, queen b1, king c3. And now after rook to c1 check, white has to give up the queen, either, either taking on c1 or playing queen c2. Either way, both of these lines simply lose the game because you can win the bishop if takes takes rook c2 again queen e1 wins or queen a1 all loads all roads lead to rome so after queen f1 queen d2 rook g6 rook h2 is really the only way to stop and after rook g1 if you play king b2 which is trying to slide the king to a3 now there is queen to a1 check 
Rook guards the queen, and after king a3, queen takes e5. Black has an extra bishop and should win the game once again. But Abasov plays rook g6 after 10 seconds. Now, up to this point, Abasov has playing, been playing a great game. He's been using his time very well. He's been finding the best moves. But here, mysteriously, he plays rook g6 after a 10 second thing. Magnus goes bishop to f4 after using four minutes. And now Abasov plays another move very quickly, which is rook f6 after a very short thing. And these two moves are the reason that Abasov will go on to lose the game. He's been using his time very well. And for whatever reason, suddenly at this moment, I don't know whether it's nerves or whatever, but he panics and he plays these two moves very quickly. And with that, he throws away any chance of winning the game. And not only does he do that, but he makes it very, very difficult to potentially save a drop. In this position, what Abasov should have played was the move queen to g7, threatening rook g2 with the class kebab, hitting the queen and the rook. And if white plays bishop d2 to break up this check, now black can go queen to a1, infiltrating. And again, the same ideas exist with queen takes a2, or rook to g1 and checkmate on b1 and c1 once again. Now, in this position, white is okay here. You can play queen to e5, and after queen a2, queen b2, trade, trade, for example, black can go rook g3, attacking the pawn on d3, and after king c2, rook h3, the game should end in a draw after the exchange. Game can continue for a bit longer, but either way, at this point, opposite color bishop, same number of pawns, this should be a draw. But Abasov here, as I said, inexplicably plays the second move in a row in under 10 seconds rather than using his time. Now, it's a huge mistake also because at this point with nine plus minutes, the players are only on move number 35. There are only five more moves to go until time control. And so for that reason, you should be using more time. And now after bishop to e3, now Magnus can claim a serious advantage because the bishop covers the threat on the second rank and both the h6 pawn as well as the c5 pawn are very, very weak. Here, Abasov plays bishop to f5, another move that he plays fairly quickly, trying to activate the light square bishop. Magnus captures the pawn. So now Magnus is up a pawn. The pawn on h6 is weak, and long-term, he has great winning chances. Here, Abasov plays queen g6, which is wrong. Rook to e6 is actually the only move to sort of keep the keep the game relatively within the balance but it's a very hard move to play because you don't have any threats rookie three and rookie two are not threats here the queen covers this square and the bishop covers this square so the rook can't infiltrate and your bishop and pawn are still loose and white can even potentially just take the pawn on h6 and here you would have to see this nice tactic with bishop takes d3 king takes bishop queen to f1 check if king c2 you have rook to e2 winning the game with the kebab and if white plays a move like king to d2, now you go queen e1, king d3, queen d1, king c3, and queen to c1, capturing the rook on h6. And of course, creating the classic right triangle as well. Again, very difficult to see. And at this point, you feel like you've done something wrong. So I suspect that if you go back to when Abasov played rook g6, he probably thought that he was already completely fine. And now suddenly you realize you're down a pawn, and it's not easy to mentally shift back. So we get queen g6 here. Magnus plays king c3. And here, rook e6 is played, which is essentially losing the game on the spot because of this nasty trick with bishop takes a7. If black plays king takes a7, you now have a couple ways to win. Probably the simplest to go queen f2 check, hitting the king, and after king b7, rook f5, you have uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Black has uno, dos, and white has two extra pawns and should win very easily. Shockingly here, however, Magnus is not played. Instead, he plays this move rook to h4, which is a fairly serious mistake because now Abasov plays the move bishop g4. Now, one thing that's amazing is when you look at the time usage over the last 10 moves versus the entire rest of the game, the time usage is, is effectively what decides this game. And I think this is one of the biggest reasons that Magus really likes rapid chess and wants more quick chess instead of classical, because if Abasov had an hour here, it's very likely he plays bishop g4 in one minute and draws the game because he has enough time to find the moves. But his time usage has been very, very faulty. Playing rook g6 and rook f6 using under 10 seconds, big mistake. Here he he uses seven minutes before playing this bishop g4 move now while it's the best move because abasov uses all this time it, it it ends up being fatal to him on the next turn so he plays bishop g4 which is a great move for the following reason if you play a move like a6 white can activate the rook and start infiltrating on the seventh or eighth rank and win the game right away and when you play bishop g4 you lock the rook out of the game rook cannot get to either the f4 or d4 squares which are both open files so after bishop g4 Magnus plays this move, bishop takes h7 after a two and a half minute thing, which is a huge blunder and it's the wrong sequence. Remember back here, if Magnus played bishop a7, it would have been winning, but in this position, it actually is not winning and the game is a draw if black finds the correct move here. But Abasov with only a minute 35 on the clock uses time 
and plays the wrong check with queen f6. Now, again, if Abasov had played bishop g4 in one or two minutes and he has six minutes on the clock, I think there's a very, very good chance that he plays the correct check here, which would be queen g7. Now, the reason this check is correct is because if white blocks with bishop d4, you have this move queen to g5 here, and white has nothing better than rook takes g4, queen takes g4, and something like bishop e5, queen to d1, and d4 here, and white actually should be able to draw the game, because eventually the queen's going to get in, and if you try to force the king this way, king will be safe on a3. Again, white's queen will become too active down the road, and black will not be able to win the other reason this is so important is because after queen g7 if white plays this move king to b4 in this position now you can take the bishop and after queen to g1 check here potentially winning the bishop on g4 you have c5 check in between and after queen c5 rook to b6 king a3 now you can simply play the quiet move h5 guarding the bishop rook isn't in the game and black is actually quite a bit better white can maybe still draw with rook h1 and rook to e1 trying to activate the rook but black should have no issues so you're probably wondering, well, what's the difference? Because when you check, if white blocks with bishop d4, queen g5 once again leads to the same variation, which is a draw. I actually realized I didn't mention that white can play king b4 here, but after rook to e2 attacking the queen, now the queen's in trouble because you're trying to guard the rook. And if you play moves like queen g3, there is now this move c5 check. And after bishop takes c5, there's queen d2 check, king a4, bishop d7 check, king to a3, and then queen a5 is actually checkmate, and you lose out of nowhere. So it, it looks like it, it looks like it, it looks like there's probably no difference between the checks, but the problem is that when you check on f6, white can now go king b4 here. And the big difference is that now if you capture the bishop, white can simply go queen c7 check and take the take the bishop. And there's you have a check on f8, but after king f4, there's queen a5, there's rook g7. It's a total disaster, and you will lose the game in a few moves. Whereas when we go back to this position, with this queen g7, king to b4 takes, there's an in-between c5, which is good. And if, and if white tries to play d4, for example, again, you can simply take because the queen covers the c7 square and it guards the bishop at the same time. And so queen g7 would have saved the game. But again, move number 40, Abasov low on time, and he does play the wrong check. Now, all this could have been avoided if he had played bishop g4 in, in less than seven minutes. But I suspect that because Abasov played rook g6 and rook f6 and suddenly went from what should have been an easy draw and or potentially a win into a worse position, he double clutch. He double clutch. He started feeling nervous. He started feeling unsure. Spent too long on this move, and he pays a huge price because when he uses the 30 seconds to 40 seconds to play queen f6, now after Magnus takes his time and plays king before the game is over here. As I said, if king a7, there's check and rook takes g4, which wins. And so Abasov tries to play rook e5. After rook to e5, Magnus now goes d4, attacking the rook. And the problem is basically, if you ever move the rook anywhere, there's suddenly queen b8 check and queen b6, which is mate instantly. And, in the, and as well, if you move the rook to e8, now I can very simply take the bishop on g4, let alone play a move like bishop c5. But everything is winning here because suddenly white's king is very safe with the pawns and the bishop around it. So Abasov plays queen to e7 check. And here Magnus very ruthlessly plays this move c5 here. And Abasov resigns the game because there's simply no way to save the rook. If you move the rook anywhere, actually any square on the board, even rook takes c5, there's queen b8 check, king a6, and queen b6 mate. So you cannot move the rook anywhere with allowing the, this uh, mate on the diagonal. If you play king takes a7, I can simply take the rook on e5 here. And after queen b7, king to c3, you have no checks with the queen. King is very safe. And with the rook, rook in return for the bishop, white will be able to win this very, very smoothly. So after c5, Abasov resigns the game. And with that, Magnus takes a 1-0 lead in the match. Now this, this game truly is a heartbreak for Abasov because I felt that once he got the bad position out of the opening, he probably played about 20 great moves in a row. And then whether you want to call it magic, Ma Magnus effect, voodoo, whatever, when he got to the position where it was actually fine and potentially winning, he suddenly plays his move rook g6 in 10 seconds instead of using his time. And then he immediately plays rook f6 as well. These two moves cost him the game after he played 20 incredibly great moves. And so it's a very heartbreaking loss for Abasov. Also, he had the chance later with the with this um with this, this queen g7 check as well but again spent too little time on the on rook g6 and rook f6 then spends too long on bishop g4 so on move number 40 he doesn't have enough time to calculate the queen g7 instead of queen f6 is the correct check and so chess can be a very very brutal game it's a true heartbreaker for abasov but magnus on average keeps it together 
plays some of the better moves, doesn't play perfectly, but he plays mostly good moves, and Abasov unable to keep it together, and so Magda shows his quality once again and wins a very, very exciting first-round game in the semifinals against Abasov. Takes a 1-0 lead. Tomorrow, Abasov coming back with the white pieces. If he can beat Magnus, he will force tie breaks. If it's a draw, Magnus will move on to the final, and he will be only a couple of games away from winning the World Cup for the first time in his entire chess career. So very, very exciting. We'll see what happens, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this recap. Make sure to hit that subscribe button below if you haven't already, and I'll be back tomorrow with another recap after Game 2 of the semifinal match between Magnus Carlsen and Nijat Abasov in the FIDE World Cup being held in Baku, Azerbaijan. See you guys. Bye.